Hey folks, Will Owen here with JetBoatPilot.com. On today's video, we're going to show you the installation procedure for installing a set of thrust vectors on a BRP-powered jet boat. Uh, BRP-powered meaning a Sea-Doo, a Scarab, Glastron, a Chaparral. Uh, any of those jet boats uh, are, are going to all use the same uh, jet pump, nozzle, reverse bucket. So these parts are basically universal. Now you'll see on our website they're actually listed separately, but that's just for internal tracking purposes for us to kind of tell uh, how each one is selling into each particular brand, but they're basically the same part. Uh, when you open your box up, you are going to basically see the thrust vector unit already pre-assembled, uh, just as you see it here. Now this is the new and improved uh, version that's just been released uh, May of 2018. This is going to have the upgraded uh, cross member with the spray guard as well as the uh, bumper here on the rear which is basically designed to allow this device to work with the new uh, intelligent reverse and neutral uh, boats that are coming out now so the problem we were having before was when the part when the fins would rotate upwards they would get caught underneath the reverse bucket in some situations uh, adding this bumper has eliminated that potential on these intelligent reverse and neutral models so now they're completely universal they'll fit pretty much any uh, BRP powered jet boat from really 2005 or so up through 2018. So uh, for those of you getting ready to do your own installation, uh, watch this video, kind of tell you step by step how to do it, save you some time. Uh, also too, you're gonna get two different versions of this product. You have a single engine version, which we have here. You can tell that it's a single engine version because it's got this longer key slotted strap at the bottom here. Um, the twin engine version is exactly the same, but the bottom strap uh, we actually mount to a location on the bottom of the nozzle that's threaded uh, on the uh, twin engine version. On the single engine version, it'll just be simply this key slot, uh, just like you see on the top here. So that's what we're doing today is on the single. Uh, before we get started here, I want to go through some of the tools that you'll need. Uh, previous models recommended that you use this little small Allen wrench that came with the kit. Uh, we actually have moved away from that, uh, moving more for a pair of vice grip pliers. Uh, because of uh, a part that we'll see later on in the video that really the vice grips work better. So a small pair of vice grip pliers like this is, is great. Uh, we'll set this Allen wrench aside. We're probably not going to use this. You're also going to need a uh, ratchet and a uh, 7 16 uh, socket. Just a standard size like this is fine. And then you're also going to need an um, apex handle and a 4 millimeter apex or a T-handle with a 4, 4 millimeter uh, to do your installation. Finally, with the kit, you're going to get some red Loctite, and you'll notice on the top of the part, it has a, logo, a label here that says apply red Loctite. It's very critical on this step that a red Loctite is applied because we don't have nylon inside this little threaded part here. It's a very custom part, so the Loctite is important to keep this part from staying on the boat and not uh, falling off. So with that said, preparatory steps here. First thing you want to do, obviously, is get your reverse bucket up out of the way. Simply take your throttle lever, press it forward. That's going to get the reverse bucket up out of the way. With the new design with the key slots, we do not need to remove anything off the bolt, the boat. But you do need to go ahead and prep uh, for your install by removing the straps. Uh, we'll take off this nut, set it aside. The strap here uh, goes in place with basically this flat surface up. It's going to come downward and make a turn upward. If you bring the camera in real quick here, I want you to kind of look at this top here. You'll see your main mount bolt here. You see the main mount bolt? We're going to take the key slot strap, we're going to slide it over the top of that washer that you see, and then it's going to come back, and we're going to leave it right there for now. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom assembly here, pull off the nut and the uh, screw, we'll set that aside, pull off the nut and the screw, set that aside. The bottom strap here we will put on in just a minute, but before we do that, I want to go ahead and get this top one going. It says apply red Loctite. I'm going to take off this sticker, but just remind myself that I'm going to use red Loctite in this step here. We'll go ahead and take the inside part of the clamp here, has a stop on the front. It's designed to slide up on the face. And if you notice on the bottom, there's a notch right here. We'll align this notch with a notch on the bottom of the pump. And once that slides up and on, you can tell that you've got it in place when it's seated. Just get the camera in here and see how it's seated up against that face there. All right, so now we've got that seated there. I'm gonna take the top screw, which is in place now, and we're gonna pass it through the uh, bracket, if you can see that or not. You can get a good shot of that there. The screw is now through the bracket, 
and then we'll just go ahead and apply some red Loctite uh, to that screw. It may be easier to do that uh, before you uh, add it through. I'm going to go ahead and pull it back out. Just add a couple of drops here. We don't want to go crazy with it, but it is a good idea to add a couple of drops of red Loctite on this step here to prevent this from backing itself off. So now that we've got that on, we'll get it, uh, get it started here. You can also bring this reverse gate down during this step if you uh, so choose um, just to make this getting this little uh, piece on a little easier uh, I have not done that uh, because I'm lazy and I'm, I like to just kind of get things going here but uh, it does make it a little bit tighter to work if that uh, reverse bucket is in the up position what we're going to do is just kind of finger tight it right now all we're doing is we're indexing to make sure this is kind of where it needs to be we're not going to tighten it down just yet now I'm going to take my bottom strap here. You'll get underneath the, the boat here. We'll turn the steering uh, nozzle over. Right inside here, you've got the bottom bolt. I want to slide this strap and this key slot here over. And we're going to find ourselves just underneath that washer. So once we've got it in place, you'll see how it slides forward. And now underneath, you'll see that this little notch here comes around that notch on the bottom all right so now that's aligned I'm going to take this screw now we don't need to put Loctite here because I'm using a nylock nut on this one we'll pass it all the way through the bracket and if you can see it from the back side we've got this nylock nut nylock nuts gonna go on we'll just start it with our fingers making sure that we don't cross thread it. Once you've got it started, we'll move to the other side, insert our screw, and then we'll start it with our fingers. All right, so that's good. All right, so now I have those finger tied in. I'm gonna go ahead and take my four millimeter Allen here and my uh, 7 16 and we'll put it on the back side. And then once it's uh, going there, we can just kind of ratchet with our hand here. You may be looking at this boat and wondering how did it get so much corrosion. This boat has been used now for probably about uh, six years in a saltwater environment. And uh, it uh, probably could use a little bit of powder coat. But uh, saltwater boat guys, if you're listening to this video, obviously it's a good idea to go ahead and rinse everything down and put a good coat of protection on your boat uh, if you want to make it look shiny and pretty all, all the time and keep from having this this look here I don't think it's structural but it's definitely the powder coat has seen better days I don't think it would have any issues is what I'm saying I think it, it's just a cosmetic thing so we'll go ahead and tighten this guy down too as far as the torque value you don't really need to worry about a torque value I would just make sure you snug it down nice and tight and firm on this lower side now on the top we are going to have a little discussion there in a moment about uh, how tight you want to make that bolt but the bottom was just make them nice and snug you'll feel when you've got it right okay if you bring the camera back around what we want to do now we want to take the vice grip pliers and we want to go ahead and lock them down on the back side of that nut and it's a good idea to go ahead and before you start your installation to go ahead and get these spanned the way that they need to be so they're not too, too chubby hard to lock down but we'll go ahead and lock those down now put this back behind the nut does have the knurling on it which is great that allows it to uh, be held by this set of pliers here and keep it from spinning and what we want to do is we want to tighten it here, but we do not want to over tighten. If you over tighten, you'll find that this lip right here begins to travel north. What it's trying to do is it's trying to draw that clamp back that direction. And we don't want to put too much pressure, uh, over pressure on this clamp because then it will distort the face and it potentially could cause a failure. So just nice and snug is all you need. It's there to just hold the part in place. So we'll tighten it and then just give it a nice snug and then let the Loctite dry. And I'm going to recommend letting the Loctite dry overnight. Don't try to use the boat just then. You know, may, wait until it's had a good chance to, to really set. So we just want to tighten it 
So we feel like we got it nice and snug. And I feel like that's good and snug there. You just don't want to over tighten it. Again, you can you can really distort this face here and, and do some damage to the part if you over tighten it. All right, now we've got everything tightened down. We have Loctite on the top. We have these screws down in the bottom tight. We have good action here. The nozzle is able to move up and down freely. Um, it's, it's free to move, it's not binding. Um, another note for those of you guys that have expressed concern about this, bring the camera around here, I want you to focus it on something real quick. Some have uh, expressed concern about this little arm right here, when it turns over hard, how that arm touches this railing here, and same thing on the other side. It's intentional, we designed it that way. If you don't have that area there protruding that far, the steering can actually go another probably an eighth of an inch. And when it does that, um, it actually is able to rub these fins up against this, um, this uh, mounting arm for the reverse bucket. So this is actually designed to prevent it from jamming itself so that the fins don't get scarred up when you're hard over left or hard over right and the fins may be up and down. So just FYI, don't go shaving these edges down, leave them the way that they are. Um, so once again, we just want to check everything, make sure it's all nice and firm, snug, no issues. Again, ensuring that you let that Loctite cure. And uh, that should be your install. Uh, for the twin engine models, you would replicate the same procedure on the other uh, jet pump, obviously using the bottom strap that comes with it. Uh, we do not put this strap in a single engine box. You won't see this in a single engine box. And also, we do not put that lower key, key slot strap in a twin engine box so you won't see that but I wanted to make sure that you understood watching this video that you could do the same use this same video for a twin engine adaptation uh, and there's a twin engine version on the website as well uh, for more information specifically about thrust vectors and how they can help your slow speed steering responsiveness on a BRP powered jet boat uh, visit jetboatpilot.com you can find us uh, Instagram Facebook Twitter YouTube uh, we got tons of video content out there also on all the forums Facebook you'll find us on all the different chat rooms and uh, obviously on jetboaters.net if you have questions, we'll be glad to help you out with any questions that you might have. Well, we appreciate you watching this video today, and we hope it was helpful to you. Thank you. Have a great day.